Welcome to Whale of a Day. Welcome to Whale of a Day. Well, that was a very warm welcome. Hello, and thanks for joining us. I'm Maria Sorayo. And I'm Liz Brown Swanson. It was a whale of a welcome for the 38th annual Whale of a Day. So glad to be with you, Maria. So glad to be with you as well, Liz. And this event just gets bigger and better every single year, but so much goes into it and everybody is really enjoying themselves. This is a perfect, as they call it, a Chamber of Commerce or a City of RPV kind of day. It's absolutely gorgeous with the whales coming by. The, the whales are coming by, the community is coming by, we've got music going on, and so many of our, our council are here, uh, prominent city figures, and I had a chance to catch up with some of them who are talking about Whale of the Day, so here's what they had to say. On behalf of the RPV City Council, it's my pleasure to welcome everyone to the 38th annual Whale of the Day. Can you believe we've been doing this for 38 years? And it gets bigger and better every year. And our city is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. And this is just one of the many events that we're having this year. It's wonderful to gather here today with so many city residents and visitors to celebrate the majestic migration of the Pacific Gray Whale from one of the premier whale watching locations in California. I'm with the great mayor of Rancho Palos Verdes, Mayor Barbara Ferraro. You just officially kicked off Whale of a Day over at the stage. Your thoughts, I mean, how this brings us all together as a community. Well, it's wonderful to see so many people here. Um, I know it was just the kickoff, but these people have already been here for a couple of hours kicking it off. So many kids here. It's so good to see young people out and to have a wonderful and safe place for them to come and have a good time and uh, look at the ocean, look at the whales. They said they just saw two big whales go by. This is really a special time of year during whale watch season. It tapers off at about May, but they always seem to know to come by and give us a fluke or a wave for whale of a day. I know you've been coming for years. Some of the highlights for you, what you always look forward to. Well, it's just always wonderful to see so many people here and to see the community come out and the weather is perfect today and there have been a few days where it has been gray and overcast, but not today. It is just perfect. We are here today with Councilman Bradley, who's been on the road. He is back in RPV at Whale of a Day today and uh, how are you enjoying yourself? Great. Uh, Whale of a Day is such a special event. It's so exciting to see everybody out here today. Um, you know, a couple years ago, COVID, we weren't able to have Whale of a Day or some of our other major celebrations. But as we enter, not enter, but continue our 50th year celebration for the city of RPV, Whale of a Day has been so special. And I'm glad to see the community out today. Beautiful sunny day. Looks like the overcast is starting to burn off. It couldn't be nicer. You know, the city, it's so important for the city to do events like this for the community. And they really put it as a priority. Why do they do that? Well, because community is what the city is all about. Um, it is all about the citizens, getting the kids out here, getting the kids involved, getting the community to come together. It's just so special. And our Parks and Rec uh, Department does such a phenomenal job putting these on. Um, and it's just such a special time to be able to celebrate the Pacific Ocean, our whales that pass by out in front of Point Vicente. It's just a wonderful time. And you know, the big news is the lighthouse is open today. Is it? I didn't even know that. I haven't been to the lighthouse in years. I am going to go over there for sure. It's an iconic landmark, so for everybody to be able to go over and see it up close is so exciting. Oh, absolutely. And actually also see the Coast Guard Museum, which is at the yep. base of the lighthouse that most people don't even realize exists. So it's a really neat um, ode to the history of the Coast Guard here in Palos Verdes and in Southern California. Well, we are here today with Councilman Eric Alegria and his daughter Amora, but we have some big news here because, tell us the news. Well, the news is my daughter, my oldest daughter, is turning 11 today, so happy, oh, birthday, happy Amara. birthday, Amara. Happy birthday, Amara. That is awesome. And you get to 
be at well of a day. This is a great place to start the birthday. I think so. The sun is out. Of course, we've all been dealing with a lot of rain for the last several weeks and months. So what a great day. I'm in a great mood today. It is, and I think this is even going to be a bigger well of the day than usual because we already see people out early and the music is playing, and this is just such a fun event. Just tell us why it's so important for the city to do this. Oh, this is so special and so important. This is, to me, is a celebration of our community, a celebration of our heritage, a celebration of the ocean, and I'm looking right now just sort of adjacent at the stage, and it's sort of right in the backdrop of the ocean so folks got to come out and enjoy this this is the best venue in southern california you know it really is i know people come here really from all over because they want to see whales they go out on the back patio and it's always so exciting to see a whale have you guys ever seen a whale out there i've seen one whale before at a far distance okay. but uh but i also am a dad of four so i haven't had the time to sit <laughs> and really observe so those folks that i do talk to say that they actually do see quite a bit of activity out there you just have to have the patience to to look and that's, see that's true now have you ever seen a whale out there I think I've seen one before, but that's it. I know, it's always so exciting, and they ring that bell back there, so it's, it's always a good time. What's your favorite thing about Well of a Day? Oh, well, the people. That's the easiest thing to say. Yeah, the people here, the city, of, and the city staff, I always enjoy seeing all of you. This is, uh, we have hardworking staff in this city. I think our community should know, and it's fun to come out. I'm out here early right now, but everyone's here. We're prepared. The staff have thought of everything and they're constantly improving this event. We are here with RM Ronnie and our city manager, and are you having fun at Well of the Day? I am having a blast. This is one of my favorite events that we host, and so it's great being here. I'm really excited, and it's what a beautiful day, too, to have. It, it was, considering what the earlier in the week looked like and where what we um, have today, we're very lucky, so. You know, we always talk about the community and how they come together, but when you see an event like this, it is just overwhelming to see how many people come out for this. Uh, absolutely. I have to be very honest. I was driving down uh, Hawthorne Boulevard on my way here, and uh, I saw the queue of cars lining up to pull into City Hall, and I just smiled. I smiled because I'm like, wow, another successful event. What is your favorite thing about Well of a Day? Seeing the people out and about and all the kids, yes. the kids, and, and I, was t I was telling some friends at dinner last night about today's event, and they're like, what is it all about? It's really to celebrate and um, the migration of the whales, and, and, but, but there's so much more to it, and it's just bringing people together and watching the kids have such a great time. So that's really, that, that, that warms my heart. And then, and then, of course, we've got to acknowledge all the kids that, uh, the students for the po post poster contest too. They've done amazing, such talented kids out there. So I was say, the artwork is it's so hard to pick. I don't know how you guys do I, it. I, I when I was looking at all the posters a couple weeks ago and I was looking at them and going, oh my God, they're all good. How do you select which one is the winner? They're all winners in my mind. All winners. Now Liz, it's been many years since the lighthouse has been open, the area over there, and I know you went over there. Tell us about it. Yeah, it was really great to be back in the grounds of the Point Vicente uh, Lighthouse. Of course, it's it's a legendary lighthouse in yeah. our community. During COVID, they closed and no longer do. They used to do monthly tours. Right. Well, those monthly tours are back, and it's so glad to have it ready for Whale of a Day. And the fun thing is, Maria, of course, we now have a new intern. Yes. Gray Patton. He's working with the city of Rancho Palos Verdes at the RPV TV studio. So we took Gray over. Over for a lighthouse tour, so let's join Gray. Hello, everybody in RPV. This is Gray Patton reporting in front of the famous lighthouse of Rancho Palos Verdes. And although we cannot go inside as of now, we still have a great tour to take you on, as well as the, some Coast Guard we'd like you to meet. The Coast Guard and the Auxiliary are very proud to be back open for Whale of a Day. Um, this program started back in the 90s, shut unfortunately for three years due to COVID, uh, but now we've uh, reopened the second Saturday of the month, regular, uh, 10 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon. Uh, open houses in addition to whenever RPV has Whale of a Day matching that open house. It's real excited to be here. I've been trying to come here for decades and finally got the date for the Whale of a Day and all like that, and then this was open at the same time and I wrote that in my calendar and got to be here. This is great. Yeah, it's just, it's absolutely 
gorgeous. It's so nice and clean, and I was really happy to hear that they're, they've opened up the rest of the properties. Uh, tell us what you're doing here today and the Boy Scouts are doing here today at the Lighthouse. Uh, well, personally, I'm running the game stand so people can just come by and play little games. And the Boy Scouts are just helping that out here for like the Whale of the Day tour at the PV Lighthouse. That's really fascinating. Is there anything that you've learned uh, so far that's really cool or hoping to learn or see? Uh, I guess something kind of interesting is that this lighthouse was built in 1926 because they needed a lighthouse to, for the seas. And at first, uh, there, we, there was people here like all day, every day, 24 hours of the day that had to run it. And now it's just like mostly automated. It's important to remember, however, that the light is an active aid to navigation still needed in a modern world. And so it flashes all night long with its new LED lens. Uh, we're very happy that the old lens from 1926, uh, the old Freyna lens, is next door in a beautiful setting at the uh, Point Vicente Interpretive Center. I was the base commander, but was lucky enough to live here from 2004 to 2007 in one of the original lighthouse keepers' quarters. So that was a lot of fun. Retired from the Coast Guard in 2009, uh, came back here for a job in 2013. So since then, uh, my wife and I have been caretakers of the property as volunteers and running the open houses. We're here today in front of the rear of this car. Uh, would you like to tell me what all of, these, all of these contraptions are? Absolutely, well, these contraptions are lifesavers for those of you that may go out in the water. This is a marine VHF radio. The Coast Guard monitors the distress channel, which is channel 13. So I'm going to let you go ahead with your left hand and put this on channel 13. Go ahead, just dial it up there. Put this is exciting. Put your team to work. There you go. Oh, you're a great radio operator. That's channel 13 for uh, the larger ships. Now let's go up to channel 16. And 16 is the international distress and calling channel. The United States Coast Guard has a fantastic watch all over the United States of this channel. No matter where they are out on the open, everybody's guarding channel 16. I had so much fun learning about radios in the lighthouse. Remember, you could come visit here the second Saturday of every month. I can't wait to come back. Now back to you, Liz and Maria. You know, every year this gets together, Maria, with the help of the city and the docents of right. Los Sereno to Point Vicente, the, the docent group that gives the tours to the museum. That's right. And it's with all of them and the volunteers that make this happen. They do such an amazing job. I mean, they really couldn't do this event without them. No, so let's take a little break and meet up with one of the docents. Yeah. So as we've been saying, this event doesn't come together without the help of the docents. I'm being joined by Cindy. She's a new docent with Los Serenos this year, but not new to Whale of a Day. You love coming here. I do. I brought my kids here when they were young um, to enjoy all the festivities. So it's nice to be able to be here and, and volunteer here. Activities, and of course, one of my favorite activities is always you got to make a whale hat. Never too old for one. So walk us through. Let's let's make a whale hat, Cindy. <laughs> sure. So the first thing that we're going to do is make sure this is the right size for you. People tell me. <laughs> people have told me I have a big head. <laughs> okay, we got the right size. And uh, then we're going to make. We have to have a, a tail on the end of the hat. I think we've watched hundreds of kids each year make these hats at Whale of a Day. Definitely one of the uh, traditions that you don't want to miss at Whale of a Day. Pick out your favorite sticker okay. to put on the hat. Okay. Show my cameraman. And as we say, hats off to everyone at Whale of a Day. Now, Liz, in addition to using the camera here today, I put Carlos to work because there is a scavenger hunt going on here. So here's more from Carlos Rivera. Okay, I'm here with Diane, one of our great docents. And Diane, what are you doing here today? Tell us about the, well, normally, the scavenger hunt. Normally every year for our event, Well of the Day, we put on our puppet shows. But because there were some difficulties this year with the museum being closed, we decided to do a scavenger hunt so that we can still use our puppets. And what the scavenger hunt is that we take all of our puppets, as you can see here, and we have about five or six puppets puppeteers with two puppets each and they're walking around 
And what the kids do, they get these cards and then we mark them off. And once the cards are completed, then they go over to our table and guess what? They get a prize. Oh, okay. But here's the lesson. We still have to have lessons learned. So as we give the kids the puppets, we talk about each one like our puppet show. Like this is Rocky the raccoon. Where does he live? What does he eat? Does he like water so he can wash his face, right? And the same thing with Sea Star. Okay. Hold that, Rocky. Thank you, Rocky. And so a lot of people call him what? A starfish. Right. But we try to tell the kids that he's a Sea Star. Sea Star because he's not a fish, right? He doesn't have any fins. So, but he has little tube feet in his little lakes here. One, two, three, four, five, because he lives in the tide pools. Oh, okay. yeah, so yeah. what are the benefits of having tube feet? You can move around. Yes, and also when the waves come over, right, because you're in a tide pool, he's not swept away. Oh. So these are the lessons that the kids learn. Oh, okay. And they learn that too in our puppet show, but we kind of summarize it to make it interesting and still educational. Okay, well, so thank, we'll you. Here thank you. Thank you, thank you. Until we yeah. run out of prizes. Thank so, you. one last question. What do you like about Whale Day for you? Oh, the people. Their enthusiasm, especially right now with the sun out, with the weather it's been, and then seeing the little faces, you know, the kids smiling and enjoying all the entertainment and stuff. Yeah, all the educational programs and just the people. A hunt continues at Whale of a Day in the scavenger hunt. We've got Susan the docent. You're part of the scavenger hunt. What do we get going on with your critters? Hi there. I'm Luna the sea otter, and I live in the kelp forest. I'm a mammal. And I'm Gary Garibaldi the fish, and I live in the kelp forest too. It's a great place to live, and it's right over there. And you can see me, not as many sea otters in Southern California, but lots of Garibaldi. Of course, there's one tradition Maria and I always make sure we keep true to, and that is shopping. Shopping, shopping, shopping. We're getting ready for the street fair. We're prepping ourselves, okay? Yeah. We are work prepping ourselves. This is hard work. Shopping at Whale of a Day. And the cool thing is, we just came across a new vendor here, but she's not new to the city, Mona Dill. She ran Whale of a Day for years, and she is running the booth. What do you say? Do we go find Mona? Let's go find Mona. Come on. <laughs> Where's Mona? Here we go. Where's Mona? Where's Mona? This is like, you know, there's a scavenger hunt here at Whale of a Day. Come on, Miss Maria. We found Mona. Mona, it's such a pleasure to see you. It's so exciting to be here with Whale at Whale of a Day. How are you doing? Well, you know I'm doing so good here at Whale of a Day because that's how it is over here. No fluke. It's always a great day at Whale of a Day. Old habits die hard, Maria. Fun for you to be back here? You know, it really is. This is fun, and this is my retirement job. So I just love everything about the ocean and the sea, and people love it too. They're all like enjoying looking at the shells and whatnot. So we're all having a great day. Well, you know what? I said you taught everybody here very well because it's a, it's a good day out here. Lots of people. Everybody's happy, having a good time. Well, it's always about all the people here. So I think that's really the great part about it all, because that's what makes it. In the end, that's all we've got. So it's a good day. Maria, there's always so much fun to be had here at Whale of a Day. There's always the old traditions, like making a hat. You know, yes. I'm going to make a whale hat. And getting some cattle corn, which you know I'm going to get some cattle corn. And they brought some new traditions in, like they have more food yes. and drinks. Oh. And uh, so I think we should just like go, go and on check tour. it out. Check it out. Sam and I will go. A state of war on this great shore. I'm up for the bounty. Each day, but the cook was Dutch and behaved as such for the diet he gave the crew. Was a number of tons of high cross buns chopped up with sugar and glue. So go you and I home, sail and I will go. We'll stay more on this great shore. I'm off for the bounding pain. Hey, hey, hey. I'm off for the bounding pain. Off for the midnight train. I'm off to my love like a boxing glove a thousand miles away. Will on a diet that's cheap and crude. We shivered 
pride shook as we dumped the cook in a tub of his gluesome food. And nautical pride we laid aside as we passed a vessel ashore. By the Goldie Isles where the poopa smiles and the Anaga Sanders roar. So blow you and tie ho So much fun here. It's Aria's first whale of a day. Our little calf is having such a great time. As you can see, fun for all ages. I had a little bit too much fun making my hat here, but it's just a great day to be out in the community and spot some whales. Tell us about what's happening at Whale of a Day. Uh, we have. It's been a wonderful morning. So we start at 6 o'clock in the morning, and we actually had what we call a cow-calf pair, which is a mom and a baby, come through at about 8 o'clock this morning, which was really exciting for us to see. And the baby was doing feeding behavior, so we can watch the baby go on either side of the mom, and that's the baby nursing. So it was really exciting to see this morning. And then just about an hour ago, we had two adult gray whales also going north back to Alaska. And one was a fluker, which means the whale, when it dives, would put its tail up in the air, and so you could actually see the flukes. This year for 2023, how has the whale watch season been going for you all, and what do you love about what you do? So the whale watch season is a challenge right now. We have had um, an, un we can't say an unnamed mortality event right now where whale numbers have been down overall. But that being said, the experience is wonderful. I work in higher education as an associate provost during the day. So it's so much fun to actually be a census member on the weekends. It is so great what you do is citizen science. You come out to the back patio of the Interpretive Center. You watch for the whales, count the whales. And what is the best whale watching tip you can give right now on Whale of a Day? Just be patient and have fun. The whales are not on any schedule, everyone. They don't come at a certain time of day. They're driven biologically to migrate. So the whole thing is just come out, relax, have a good time, talk to the census members, ask them questions and get involved. You can always volunteer to be a census member. Well, I always brag about my beautiful uh, whale tail hat, but Mallory, Mermaid Mallory, you have the most beautiful mermaid tail in the world, and you are so special that we have you here at Whale of a Day um, telling your tales and, and talking to the kids about the environment. Talk about what you share when you come here. So I always try to share about cleaning the beaches, making sure we recycle and just take care of our environment so we can have amazing days like today and cleaning up after ourselves when we go out into the wonderful nature that we have. You know, so many girls when they grow up think about, you know, maybe being a princess. When did you decide you were going to be a mermaid? Well, I was always a mermaid. I was born a mermaid and I will forever be a wonderful mermaid. And that's no tail. Let's see you wag your tail for us, or wave your tail. We love it.
possible as far as setting up well of a day. I know you do it months and months in advance, but Emily, I have to tell you that thank you so much for bringing the kettle corn because it's my favorite thing to eat at well of a day. That's pretty good, but I'm personally a churro girl. <laughs> Well, you know what? Everybody has been commenting. The food trucks have been a hit. There have been lines all day. We've got the snacks. We've got the beer and wine. I mean, how are things going so far? I think everything's just going great. I mean, it's a jam-packed spot here. Plenty of things to do. I'm just so happy how everything turned out. No, you did such a great job. And I think, honestly, there are more people here. I know the parking is... Everybody's showing up, and there's, you know, people coming from not only our community, but really other surrounding communities as well. Yeah, I think we've maxed out our parking this year, which is always a good thing, you know, but we're making it work the best we can and getting everybody in here. Yeah, and the music has been spectacular. How do you select who gets to play at Well of a Day? That's a tough one. We do get a lot of people that reach out, and so we try to rotate things throughout the year, but we also have some favorites that have kind of been our closers each year, Smokey Hollow. Um, actually, one of the members in the band is one of our volunteers, um, so we bring them back every year, but we try to change up our midday and morning entertainment, so we really just kind of listen in and see what, you know, think what everyone is going to like. And I guess people are seeing whales back there today. Yes, I heard when the mayor's welcome was going on, there were some whales right behind. So what more can you ask for? You know what? It's a picture-perfect day here in Rancho Palos Verdes for the 38th annual Whale of a Day. Is that right? Yep, that's right. And the city's 50th this year a celebration, 50 years for the city of RPV. So I think it couldn't be any more perfect. I think so, too, Emily. And really, again, congrats to you, everybody in your department and Rec and Parks because you go out of your way to make this so good for everybody. Yeah, I mean, really, it's a whole effort. The old Los Serenos de Point Vicente have about probably 60 volunteers. We have student volunteers out. It's really the whole community comes together, all these amazing organizations and vendors. It's a full-fledged effort to put this event on, so we're just happy. You know, when you talk about Los Serenos, it's interesting because it's not like they have any prep time before this, all of the volunteers just show up and they know what to do. How does that work? We actually have planning meetings with Los Serenos. It's a core group that's responsible for helping coordinate this event. So we start meeting, I think this year we actually started in November instead of December. So we started a little earlier on and that's kind of what makes this whole thing to come together is this months of planning. Well, I know you're very busy and uh, there's still more kettle corn to eat. So uh, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you and happy whale of a day, everybody. And that will do it for today's show. Liz, it's been so much fun out here with you as always. It's always a whale of a time and so glad that you were able to join us and uh, hope to see you here next year. Don't miss it. Absolutely. I'm Maria Sorreo. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. We'll see you next time. So thank you all for coming and enjoy. Blessings only.